Hello, we've taken a short drive out to Hampshire and we're going to be exploring hopefully the remains of a 16th and 17th century borderware kiln. And I think we're in the right place because um, nicely the people who built the housing estate near where the remains were found have given it a suitable name. So we're in the potteries and let's see what we can find. Well here we are in the pretty village, Hampshire village of Cove and we're right next to the M3 motorway. You can just see the embankment there at the edge of the motorway and probably hear the traffic as well, normal busy road. Um, this is the site of a borderware kiln that was excavated fully in the 1970s um, but we'll see what sort of little treasures they may have left behind. Um, the borderware industry came from the coarse borderware industry which is a medieval industry and this is a post medieval um, descendant of that uh, which ran from about 1500 right through to Victorian times. Um, the peak of production was probably from about 1500 to 1750 and afterwards um, it really um, became just a local industry supplying local coursewares because um, the Industrial Revolution and um, the larger Midlands pottery manufacturers sort of stole its world market but from about 1500 to 1700 um, borderware was used in London extensively. Um, normal for everyday cooking and tableware, never really very highly decorated. Um, and also from London was shipped out to the colonies. So we find in North America, in the earliest British settlements, such as Jamestown, you do find lots of borderware there. Um, white clay and red clay were used um, from about 1500 to 1700 white clay predominated um, and then that dropped off and we get in the 18th century red clay. Um, we get green glazes, olive glazes, brown glazes, yellow glazes, uh, various forms, the usual um, platters, mugs and pipkins. Um, I've already spotted a few pieces of pottery sticking out of the ground so we'll have a look at those. So if we pan away from the ridgeway, look down the footpath, and then over to the fence behind which is the housing estate. Uh, at the base of these bushes here, we start to find, this is the first bit I noticed, uh, there's rather a nice uh, handle there. And moving across, we have some glazed pottery here. Uh, another handle there, in the white ware. fragments of redware there, tiny fragment of whiteware there, and uh, a base there, which is quite nice. I'll just flip that over. Yes, yeah, see that's uh, red glazed. Let's see what else we can pick up. It was surmised by the original excavators that the kiln itself um, was destroyed by the M3. Uh, as it went through. So what we're seeing here are just the remains of dumps of wasters, that is pottery that exploded in the kiln or was damaged or cracked. Um, either way it couldn't be used and so it was thrown out. There are some other pieces here. The rim of a bowl. More yellow glazed ware. Very typical of the uh, 1600s. Uh, here's another nice piece that just came out of the ground there. You can see the shape of it. Uh, white clay with a yellow glaze, uh, quite a large rim from a bowl. Here are some other diagnostic bits I've just pulled out of the surface of the ground. We're eyes only, we're not digging of course. Um, that's redware, uh, the rim of a pipkin. Uh, I'll show you a complete pipkin here so you can see how that rim, uh, that ridge, uh, is part of the whole vessel. Uh, plate with a nice stripe of brown glaze there on white clay. Uh, another rim, outward turning rim for a pot. And red clay with a sort of brownish yellow glaze 
on the outside and the green glaze on the inside because they're quite nice chunky pieces, happy to have found those. Okay, we found a little bag of boardware bits to have a look at at home. We'll wash them and see if we can classify any of the forms. Um, nothing really exciting, certainly not a uh, earthenware bellamine, which they did produce but were very rare. Hello, we're going to have a look at some of the uh, material we picked up from the surface of the site in Cove in Hampshire, um, near the Surrey-Hampshire borders, which is where borderware gets its name from as a pottery type. And we're going to have a look and see what we can discover from the shards which we picked up, which are quite representative and quite pleased with those. Um, as you remember, the site was excavated in 1972 by Jeremy Haslam and um, he dated it to the second quarter of the 17th century. Um, so it's quite representative of 17th century pottery. Um, this pottery was extensively traded to London and from there to the um, American colonies as well. So it's quite a historic um, set of uh, pottery. Um, basically two types of clay were used. Uh, we get a red firing clay and a white firing clay. There you can just see that. Um, the white firing clay tended to be used for the better tablewares and mugs and platters and the red firing clay was for more utilitarian wares. Um, certainly much more white clay was produced in the 17th century um, and probably about six times as much white clay um, vessels were found as red clay ones in the excavations. Um, the glazes used, a very attractive range of glazes. Uh, you get a yellow glaze and a green glaze, which is sort of olive green, but you also get a pleasant apple green glaze. It's a bit lighter and more apple coloured than the earlier medieval or Tudor green glazes, and that's quite a good indicator of date. Uh, and you also get um, brown glazes as well there. Uh, brown glazes pre predominantly used for mugs. Um, the, um, the glazes could be combined uh, so you get brown glaze mug fragment there with a green glaze on the inside so sometimes you do get um, combinations of colours as well which is quite nice. Um, decoration um, fairly scanty, there are some incised lines around the rims of platters and plates and on mugs there was quite a lot of decoration around the body with zigzag lines uh, that's broken along the lines, you can't really see them there, you can just see the impressions on the edge of the shard. There, so what sort of forms uh, do we find in this borderware industry at this time? Um, you get a lot of open wares, uh, plates, there's rims from plates and platters there, varying sizes. You also get uh, porringers, there's a handle from a porringer. What I'll do with each of these as well, when I describe them I'll show uh, a complete piece as well so you can get an idea of what the complete item looked like, which would be helpful there. So porringers. Uh, you also get flanged bowls as well. That's the rim and the bowl would go around there. So the handle comes up and joins the rim at the top. Uh, as I said earlier, you get uh, mugs and there's a nice base, a brown glazed mug.
and bowls and other deep dishes. There's a rim there, a very plain rim of a deep bowl and again another rim there, very slightly turned out. Uh, and a rim from another bowl form. Uh, it's interesting to see the way the rim was formed. They've just taken the clay and turned it over there so there's still a hole in the middle and you can see a line where they've joined on the clay there by turning it over. So that's an interesting diagnostic piece on pottery production. Uh, pipkins, of course, no 17th century assemblage would be complete without pipkins. So remember these are free-footed dishes, um, cooking pots there with a brown glaze inside and they have these tubular handles which were used to take them off the fire with a stick there. So that's whiteware and redware. Uh, rims, pipkin rims with seating. You either get seating on the inside for a lid or in this case external seating around the rim for a lid. Redware with green glaze internally. Um, the bodies of pipkins were rilled so you get little fragments like that which come from pipkin bodies there. Quite diagnostic. And other various rims which probably from different sorts of pipkins as well there in white clay. Um, a bit more exotic are chafing dishes. Chafing dishes, um, to chafe something is to warm it or heat it in the 17th century. So they'd put little charcoal burners and have these dishes with holes in them and you can see the hole there when the glaze has gone through. Um, and then the, the heat would rise up and you'd put your, your food dish on top of little projections around the rim. So I found a couple of these pieces with holes in them which come from chafing dishes. Um, there were a couple of also some shards which show the production process, uh, wasters. Um, interestingly there's that piece, doesn't look like much. Uh, it's a white firing clay but it's got a big kiln scar on it from a red firing clay vessel. So there's a white piece with the remains of where it was touching a red clay vessel in the kiln which shows that they were firing red clay and white clay vessels in the same firing. Um, this piece also has some glaze along a broken edge which shows that it uh, broke in the kiln or cracked in the kiln and the glaze ran over the edge. That's a sure sign of a waster there um, and that's the same with that. The glaze has run over a broken edge there. Also you get bits which are covered in little fragments of clay and uh, sort of been peppered where um, vessels have exploded in the kiln and you get tiny fragments uh, coating stuck to the glaze on the outside like that just on one side so it's clean glazed on one side and then covered with these exploded parts of pot on the other side so that's another waster piece there. Uh, here's one other example of I'm not really sure if this is uh, a fault or just something that happened in the kiln. Um, basically you can see by this pooling of glaze a very thick residue of glaze there on the bottom of this mug um, that it must have been tilted at that angle in the kiln and the glaze is pooled. I'm not sure really whether that would count as a fault uh, or not. It's just there and you can see also a drip of glaze on the outside. So it's interesting you can surmise from that that these mugs were fired uh, tilted in the kiln like that. So that's not too bad really. Um, you can learn quite a lot um, from a few pieces which we gathered from the surface of this interesting kiln site. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope to be making more soon. 
Thank you. Bye.